Hey friends, it's Carly. Welcome back to my kitchen. So today is my youngest son's birthday and um, we are having a birthday party over the weekend. Uh, it's it's not a weekend day right now, but uh, so what we're going to be doing is celebrating his birthday tonight with our just our family. And then over the weekend, we'll do something uh, different and special with his friends and all of that. So today I'm going to be making his birthday cake. Um, I love making homemade birthday cakes. I am not a professional professional baker or, you know, um, decorator or all of those things. I see so many people um, who have such great talent, but then there's the rest of us who just kind of muddle our way through it. So uh, Pampered Chef has an awesome new product that I am going to demonstrate for you today. And it makes it so easy for us like novice bakers to make awesome pastries, to make awesome baked goods. Um, that are like, you know, that are like Pinterest worthy, right? So this is the new product. This is called our Secret Center Cake Pan and it comes with a couple of different parts. So let me pull it apart. First of all, it comes with two uh, equivalent of eight inch uh, pans. You'll see that it has kind of a, almost like a flower, um, uh, pattern in there. It's not just a round, so it's a little extra fancy schmancy for you. There's a reason for that other than just being awesome, and I'll talk about that in just a second. Um, this is our secret center, and essentially what this is going to do is fit right into one of these pans so that it leaves a, uh, leaves a hole in the center of the cake. And there's also another addition this is another addition that you can add to this. This is uh, the reason that it has this kind of a flower shape is because if you use this insert, you can have each slice of cake that has its own individual um, little center, like a little surprise center. Um, in these, you can put sprinkles, you can put jams or jellies, you can put different kinds of frosting or icing. Um, this is also great. Um, I've seen people use this uh, pan to make their cornbread. Um, and they'll use these little wells once they pull it out to put some chili in there. So it's like a chili cornbread kind of a mix. It's really, really cool. So today I'm not going to be using this, even though it looks lots of fun. But what I'm going to be using is this. And I'm going to put this in there um, in one of the pans so that when I make the cake and pull it out, this will be um, a secret center that I can put uh, some kind of a surprise in. Now, um, what I have done is I have just pre-made some, uh, some cake batter. Uh, my youngest son is a huge chocoholic, so he is going to be having chocolate cake today. Of course, you can use any kind of cake that you would like. If you wanna do box mix, we don't tell on you, so absolutely do that. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take my kitchen spritzer. You'll notice that I have it filled up to the line there with any oil of your choosing. I'm gonna tighten the cap. Every time you use this particular product, you do need to make sure um, that you loosen the cap after using it. And the reason for that is that you don't want the oil to get um, pressurized up and around the nozzle, and then it could get gummy, and ain't nobody got time for that. So all I'm doing right now is just spraying these, uh, these pans just like you normally would. Um, I'm spraying, making sure that I spray the center so that the cake does not stick to that. Um, this kitchen spritzer is also really awesome. Um, you can actually, it has a cover. It's hard to see in there, but there's a little cover on the bottom that um, I'm gonna give it a burp. Make sure you burp the spritzer. There it is. And then you can just pop this back on the top and this stores right in your, in your cabinet. Um, so the kitchen spritzer, um, 
actually you can infuse it. There is a cover on the bottom spout. So if you wanted to put garlic in there or basil in there or something like that, you could have a garlic infused or a basil infused oil to spritz over your vegetables. Um, and you could do that because nothing will get sucked up the tube, which is really awesome. So I'm gonna go ahead and take my pre-made cake batter. Of course, I mentioned it was gonna be chocolate because my son is a chocoholic. Um, and I'm gonna try my best. Like I said, I am not a baker. I'm gonna try my best to um, evenly distribute this in both of my pans. Now, we're not perfect, right? So perfection is not really in the cards. But essentially, um, I, I just pre-made this, uh, this uh, cake batter in my stainless steel mixing bowl, which is one of my absolute favorite mixing bowls. And then I'm just kind of scraping it out with my mix and scraper. Love the mix and scrapers, absolutely love them. They're, you'll notice that they're, they're obviously silicone, so they scrape every little last bit. But, and they also, because they're silicone, they're very heat resistant and they don't take stains. So if you have, you know, some of those uh, silicone or those uh, scrapers that are like, orange because you, you know, use turmeric or something in your, in your cooking, that doesn't happen uh, with ours. So you will see that I have filled both of my cake pans um, just about evenly. Um, I'm going to pretend like it's completely even because, you know, because I'm not a baker and I'm not going to, you know, worry too much about it. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to pop these two pans in a 325 degree oven for about 30 to 35 minutes or until a toothpick comes out clean or a cake tester comes out clean. Um, depending on the heat of your oven and how it cooks, you may have to check it. Usually I will check it about five minutes prior to the, the normal time that it says, um, simply because I don't want to burn cake. You know what I'm saying? It's better to be a little bit underdone and let it go for a few more minutes than to check it after it's already like concrete and charcoal. So I'm going to pop these into the oven. I will show you what they look like as soon as I pull them out. We'll be right back. Alrighty, so uh, these cook for just about 30 minutes um, and I pulled them out just a few minutes ago, just long enough so that I can actually touch <laughs> the, the pans and not scorch myself. Um, so basically what I'm going to do now is um, I'm going to start making a uh, chocolate whipped buttercream uh, for the frosting, but because it's buttercream, you have to definitely wait until your cake is completely, completely cooled. Buttercream has a tendency because there's a lot of butter in it um, to melt and get, you know, melty all over the place if you don't wait until your cake has properly um, cooled. So this is what the cake looks like. It's funny, I don't know if you can see it on camera, but it's literally just like sliding out of the pan. Um, I have not loosened this with anything. I'm just gonna pop this out. Look at that. It just comes out so easily, just like that. Um, and then after this cools, I'm not gonna do this right now, but after this cools, I will loosen around this and pop it out. Um, and then this cake pan as well. Let's see how easily, oh my goodness pops right out. So I am going to put these on my cooling racks right now um, and let them completely cool while I make my buttercream. So the next time I chat with you, I will be ready to start decorating my cake. Alrighty, friends. So my, uh, my cakes have been cooling. Um, they are nice and cooled completely. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and start frosting it. Um, I have a cake pedestal that I'm using today. So, you know, if you have a specific cake plate or something that you want to use, that's fabulous. But here's a little pro tip. Um, if you are decorating your cake on the surface that you are going to be serving it on, which is very common, put little pieces of uh, wax paper, um, just thin pieces underneath the edges all the way around so that if you happen to get frosting on that plate, once we're finished frosting it, we just kind of wiggle those pieces of wax paper out from underneath the cake, and then your cake pedestal or cake plate is not all messed up full of chocolate frosting 
or whatever frosting you happen to be using. Um, I have gone ahead and made some homemade uh, chocolate buttercream frosting. Um, I can link this uh, I can link this below uh, from my YouTube channel. If you're watching from my YouTube channel or if you're watching from one of my parties, um, head over to my YouTube channel. I can link the um, the recipe for this, but it's very, it's very simple. It's five cups of confectioner sugar. It's one cup of unsweetened cocoa powder. It is two teaspoons of vanilla extract and um, a half cup of milk. Um, that's basically all it is, and then you whip it until it's nice and uh, creamy or frothy. I usually whip mine a little bit longer um, because I do like a really whipped kind of fluffy frosting, but that's completely up to you. Now, this is my Easy Accent Decorator. Um, I'm gonna use this to get started because what I wanna do, the, the cake that I have up here is the one that has the hole in the middle. Um, and I am going to be filling this all full of goodies. But before I start filling it, I am going to outline um, that hole and then put my fillings in. It's easier to um, get the fillings to stay in if you have that hole kind of filled in. So the Easy Accent Decorator, um, I, it's, it's basically a tube. I've put um, the kind of like the large star tip on there. It comes with mm -hmm, six tips, I believe, all, all a little bit different. Um, and then what you do is you kind of pull the plunger down and then with your thumb, you simply go around in a circle, isn't that pretty? And just kind of fill that in. Now, that's pretty good, I think. Now, this obviously doesn't have to be pretty because nobody's actually gonna see that part. Um, it's just kind of making the well. Now, what I'm going to be putting in the middle of this, because my kid is a chocoholic, is crushed Oreos or crushed sandwich cookies, uh, chocolate sandwich cookies to be exact. So it's completely up to you what you would like to put into the center of your cake. Um, you could put sprinkles, you could put, uh, you know, sometimes people do like the gender reveal cakes and things like that. Um, so this would be an awesome opportunity if you wanted to do, you know, like a uh, a white buttercream and either do it blue or pink for a cake uh, gender reveal. That would be awesome for this. Um, some people actually put like little surprises, um, you know, like little army men or something like that. Uh, so that when you cut and pull the slice out, there's like little trinkety kinds of things in there. Um, but I'm all about it being completely edible. Now, what I'm going to do just to make my life a little easier is just kind of fill this in um, with my Easy Accent Decorator because I am going to make this a layer cake. So I'm just putting a little bit of frosting here and then I'm going to, um, I'm going to smooth it out uh, with my offset spatula. Now, what I'm going to do from here, once this is nice and smoothed out and you can see all that deliciousness in the center, all of those cookie pieces, um, or whatever else you would like. I'm just gonna smooth this out really quickly. I am going to put the top, uh, there are the second cake on top of this and finish frosting it. And then I will show you how you can use the Easy Accent Decorator to make it really, really bougie. So stick with me for a few minutes while I finish doing this uh, frosting and then we'll be back to decorate. Okay, so I have completely frosted my cake. Uh, of course, there's that secret center in the middle that nobody knows is there but me, so it'll be our little secret. So um, I have refilled my um, Easy Accent Decorator, and all I'm going to do uh, with the same tip is just go around the top and kind of put a little, uh, like four of these little swirly swirlies. This is again, just to make it kind of bougie. I'll do four around the outside, and then I'll do one in the center. I'm not done yet. So I'm gonna take some of these cookie pieces 
and just kind of plop them on the top since I had some extras. Now, of course, you don't have to do all this. My son, as I mentioned, is massively into chocolate. So he's under the impression, I mean, chocolate's like its own food group. Um, now, if I take one bite of this cake, I'm gonna go into like diabetic shock, right? It's just so much chocolate. But uh, normally I would not make this kind of a cake this insane, but it is a special occasion. Uh, my son is turning 11 today, so um, we are so excited for him to get home from school so that we can have gifts and uh, he gets to choose his dinner for tonight where we want to, we usually let the kids pick if they want to eat out or something like that. They get to choose what they would like to eat. And now all I'm going to do is just squish a cookie down into each one of these. Squish a cookie. And squish a cookie. And one more for good measure right there in the center. And there's the cake. Now, here is the magic part. Um, all of that frosting that you can, well, you might be able to not see it, but all of that frosting that's down there, all I need to do is just wiggle this and bring this right off and put it to the side. And you'll notice over here, I can smooth that out, but there's no, um, there's no chocolate fudgy buttercream on my pie plate, or on my, on my pie plate, on my cake plate. So it's going to look absolutely lovely for presentation. Um, when you do this, you definitely want to make sure that you, you do like four separate pieces because, you know, unless you're really good at that, like taking the tablecloth and pulling it out from all of the dishes without the dishes coming off, uh, like Houdini, uh, you might not want to do that.